everybody. Good morning and welcome to Tea with Brittany Lee. We are so excited that you're with us today. Um, this is the first of its kind webinar um, and I am just going to take a minute to talk about why this webinar is called Tea with Brittany Lee. Um, I have a very southern grandmother and when I was younger she always said Brittany Lee, Brittany Lee, whenever she was calling my name. So I just decided that it was a good idea to pay homage to my heritage. And um, so in this webinar, we are going to be drinking a little bit of tea together. And today I have some vanilla spice tea, which is awesome. If you guys have never tried vanilla spice, you probably should do that because it's amazing. Um, just a little touch of honey and it's delicious. Um, so I'm really excited that you guys are here with me today. And I'm really excited about our guest presenter, which is Michael Hill, and he is um, one of the lead developers at VRM. So we just want to welcome Michael today. Um, and I just want to let you guys know, if you have any questions, you can t tweet them to me during the webinar. Um, my username in, on Twitter is at VRMBrittany, and you can use the hashtag Tea with Brittany Lee, and I will see if I can sneak those in at the end for any questions. Um, so basically today we are going to be talking about what's coming next for VRM, and I just want to give you guys a little bit of an intro with Michael so you kind of know a little bit about him. Um, Michael has worked for VRM for 10 years. That is such an accomplishment, such a long time. That's awesome, Michael. Um, and he just celebrated his 10-year work anniversary January 25th of this year. Um, Michael's originally from Utah, and he moved to Spain with Monica and his four-year-old daughter, McKenna, who's pictured up on the left um, behind Michael. And she was four at the time, and they moved to Spain, and they loved it. They lived there. They had a great time. And then in 2005, Pete said, Michael, come to me. Come, Michael. And so Michael came a running. And um, at the time, they had another daughter, um, Michelle, who's pictured down in the right. And she is just, they're both the daughters are just lovely. And I love Monica. So it's a great little family. And um, Michael has been my manager for five years since I've been at VRM. And he is an awesome manager. And so he is going to be talking us through some of the development stuff at VRM and what's happening in the near future at VRM this year. So welcome, Michael. We're really excited to have you. Thank you, Brittany. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. Awesome. All right, so let's jump right in. What hints can you give us about what's coming from VRM with the development department? Well, to, to do that, I think I'd like to backtrack for just a moment and kind of explain how um, how the process has worked uh, here at VRM. When we are on a in a release cycle, um, big or small, uh, it has pretty much tied up our developers in in that one release. And we continue to get requests while we do that development cycle, and and they get turned into feature requests, and they get you know put into a queue, and then we you know look at them at a later date. Um, this has caused some delays in in our releases. Sometimes um, in the last two years, we've had three major releases, and they've taken a long time to get out. And while we are in those release cycles, everything else is locked out. Um, that's been a problem for us, and it's not it's not the greatest uh, of of scenarios. Fortunately, this summer we. Um, came to acquire the services of a new developer by the name of Mike Lord, who uh, brings to VRM over 30 years of experience. He's been in almost any industry you can imagine, healthcare, law enforcement, telecommunications, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, he's a rock star developer. And uh, he brings to us that that experience and those different ways of thinking of the approach. As you mentioned that I was here, I've been here for 10 years. I came from Spain, six years there, uh, developing, and so I brought some, some experience as well when I came to, to VRM. But they were much along the same lines as with VRM. Once you're in a release cycle, that's what there is, and that's what you're focused on. Mike's helped us actually uh, develop a, a scenario where we can work on multiple um, 
releases at the same time. And what this has allowed us to do is work on a large release that's got major functionality in it, but at the same time go ahead and address smaller things that come through that you know are irritating. Um, for example, uh, we just released last night version 5.1.1. Uh, it's, it's a small release, mostly made up of some bug fixes. Um, the big thing in that release is probably the tape chart has sped up tremendously. I think I hear a cheer out there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, what, used to, what used to take, you know, sometimes depending on the database, but, you know, 20 to 30 to 40 seconds is taking five, six seconds now to come down. So it's as fast as it's ever been. And we're excited about getting that out there. Uh, we have a new integration uh, with a new electronic uh, door company. Uh, called Point Central that we're that we're uh, getting underway right now. So that's that's new. And then again, some just some minor some minor bug fix, refresh issues on the page and that kind of thing. But before Mike came along, we didn't have that ability to do that. Um, so that's allowed us to to do that. So while in the meantime, while we're working on the 511, we've got some new things work coming down uh, the pipe. The first one I want to mention is uh, what we call the ADP schedule or alternative data payment schedule. This will allow your um, this will allow our clients to put together a schedule scheduled payment system for the down payment amount. So if you have a guest that is booking for summer of next year and that 50% down payment or whatever it is that you require as a down payment is, you know, uh, $6,000. They don't have to necessarily make that $6,000 now. You can create a schedule that allows them to go ahead and pay uh, in three payments or four payments or five payments. Completely flexible that our clients can set up. And even on a case-by-case uh, -case or reservation-by-reservation -reservation basis. So we're working on that. At the same time, we're working on uh, some upgrades to our long-term module, bringing that up to, to par with our short-terms, with things such as uh, hooked emails, uh, multi-tenant uh, association, um, uh, flexible charges, uh, refunding uh, scenarios uh, to credit card, things like that. So things that clients have been asking for for, for quite a while in that module. Um, is we're starting to work on that at the same time. Uh, aside from that, we're also working on um, travel insurance XML integrations. We've had CSA for a while now, and uh, we've got other travel insurance companies that want us to, to work on their XML integrations, and we started to work on that, including uh, CSA's security deposit waiver. Uh, Travel Guards XML and Rental Guardians XML. So we're we're working on those those integrations as well. And uh, finally, we're running out of developers. Um, with the success this year that we've had with our Welcome Home launch, um, people have come back to us uh, saying that Welcome Home has been real a, a great thing. It's really helped them uh, in their high season, keeping office traffic down, keeping the chaos down a little bit in the office, so, so that's been a great thing. They've also come back with great suggestions on what we need to see next. And one of the things that, that has come out of that are things like uh, on a short-term reservation, the ability to have multiple guest folios or guest profiles assigned to a reservation um, so that they can go ahead and, and gear the marketing efforts towards everybody in that, in that reservation, not just primary, who may or may not be you know, the one that they deal with later on. So. So, you know, those type of things are, are exciting. What I'm really excited about this, this new year coming isn't so much any one topic, just the fact that we can go ahead and we can react now to um, industry trends, client requests, uh, bugs, you know, and we're not locked into one thing and we have to wait until that one thing gets finished before we can work on anything else. So... That is pretty much what's coming down. That's awesome. So um, you mentioned in there um, how many improvements you guys are making. Um, but I wanted to talk about one thing, you know, and just kind of ask you how you really make that decision. Which features um, 
merit more uh, attention than others? Which development items you decide? How do you decide what goes into development um, and ultimately released to the clients at VRM? That's a good question. I think um, I think I can start with saying that we're not satisfied with our process right now, um, and I'll tell I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But what we've done up to this point is um, urgency has a lot to do with it. So um, is it something that's required because uh, of a state rule that has changed, you know, a regulation, uh, or an industry rule that's changed, or something like that? Um, that can play a part into it. Uh, bugs can take a, can take uh, precedence. We also do it based on, uh, believe it or not, when we get one request, a lot of times we get multiple requests for that same item. And the more diverse uh, geographically those requests are coming in from, we we kind of understand that that's a wide a client, a wide base, you know, application that uh, a lot of our clients could benefit from. So that has a lot to do with it as well. But as I said, we're not quite happy with just that process up to this point. What we really want to do is um, get our clients more involved in the process. And so we'll be coming, it'll probably be first quarter of next year at some point. But we'll come out with uh, a means for our clients to know what's in our queue and let them vote on what they want to see next. And as the votes come up, that gets pushed to the top. And there will be some things that you know we'll have to go uh, maybe in front of some of those uh, more popular requests only because of the other things I mentioned like urgency and because of uh, regulation changes or something like that. I imagine clients are going to be really excited about the ability to kind of vote on new features and have a say in what uh, gets developed at VRM. But, um, you know, one of the things that we do often at VRM is that we actually beta test. So um, how do you actually become a beta tester at VRM? Well, um, you first get asked to be a beta tester if you are the one to request something that we're working. Uh, if there are multiple requests for that, then you know it just becomes um, something that we look for is diversity geographically because uh, the rules are different in different parts of the country, obviously. And the more uh, diverse testing we can get, the more we can understand how our program has affected maybe inadvertently other parts of the other parts of the uh, application. But beta testing isn't beta testing isn't for the uh, lighthearted. Um, you need to be willing to live with bugs, and you need to be, know how to report a bug. A lot of times we get um, tickets in our help queue that says this doesn't work, but that's not enough for us to know. You know, it, it's an error. That's one thing, but a lot of times it's well, this doesn't work. Well, why doesn't it work? Why do you say it doesn't work? It could be a terminology issue. Uh, we call something one thing and you think of it as something different, so um, it's just a terminology thing. Um, it could be a calculation is off, but I, we don't understand why the calculation is off, and it's a business rule. I, so we need to understand why um, why those things you know happen. So it's, it takes some work. Um, and we usually have a couple that we know that we can go to, but at the same time, we're, we need people that have uh, people in the system every day, all you know, all over the system. It doesn't need to be just in one area or something like that. But you know, there you go, right there. Yeah. Uh, people that are that are working in all areas of the system on a daily basis that uh, can tell us, hey, you know, this is this is showing up, and it's showing up today because they got the beta release. It wasn't showing up yesterday. It's not. Uh, it's not an avenue for people to say, "Well, you know, here's a bug, but it was a pre-existing, you know, issue or something like that." Right. Um, those we continue to take on the on the side with the help ticket and and get them taken care of as we can. And then you you already talked about the the patients. We look for people who. 
um, know that beta testing is all about finding and fixing bugs. And so we, um, when we generally look at beta testers, we look for people that are really patient and really um, able to deal and work around the bugs because they sometimes take a little bit to fix. You know, I can, um, you know, I can't even imagine trying to go into thousands of lines of code and, and make something, one little thing, uh, work properly. But you guys are amazing the way you do that. So, um, well, you know, and, and we, um, it's not like we, we feel like develop something and we turn our clients into the QA part. Um, cause I don't want to, I don't want to suggest that that's what we do. Yeah. Shout out to our, to our QA, uh, manager, Christian who um, puts the developers, you know, to task. And, and uh, we, we go through multiple rounds of, of QA uh, testing, and we, and we find as much as we possibly can. But he's also focused on individual functionality. And while, while we try and make the, the application as simple to use as possible, um, the underlying belly is very complex. And so sometimes we inadvertently mess something up in another area that we haven't thought of, that we didn't even think, you know, mattered to the to the functionality at hand. Yeah. And that's why we need the, the beta testers to, to check those areas that we that we failed to miss. Yeah. So hopefully there's not a lot of them, but that's why we need like people in all areas. Yeah, that's exactly right. And um, you talked about procedure and, um, you know, just knowing how to report the bugs. So um, and I just wanted to um, have you just kind of announce um, our new our new feature that we're launching with beta testing. If you want to just go ahead and talk about that. Um, some of the bright sides on this slide, um, you know, we just wanted to outline that, you know, you get to influence how uh how quickly things are you know put through the system and um that you are one of the first to see and learn about new features at VRM so being a beta tester can be really exciting um for VRM but we want to announce go ahead Michael well we we're we're going ahead and, and putting out a sign up sheet for people who are interested in in beta testing and when you go to this page um it's important to read the whole page because it outlines the, the three basic steps to a good uh, bug report. Yeah. And I, I can just quickly um, go over it. Yeah. The first thing is um, we need the steps to reproduce the error. Yeah. What page did you go to? What button did you click? Um, what drop down did you open up? And then we want to know what did you see? What happened? And then we want to know what you expected to see. And those three things go a long way to helping us really find the issue. There's nothing worse than not being able to to reproduce the issue on command. And if we can't reproduce the issue on command, it's very difficult to fix. It's nearly impossible to fix, in fact. Um, but it has been done, so I can't say it's completely impossible. But those three things will really help us uh, determine what is a, you know, how to go about finding and fixing the problem. And again, it might be a communication issue where we call something one thing, you think of it as something else. Um, and so there's just an understanding there that we have to clear up. And then it could be, you know, a completely blue page that we need to fix. So yeah, please go to the, go to the website, go to that, uh, beta testing.isp page and, uh, read, read the, the page out, fill out your information and, and we'll be in touch. We don't use, I mean, we only, we try and get a diverse uh, group of clients, uh, again, in different geographical areas. Um, but we're also, you know, we're only looking for three to four, you know, depending on depending on the project uh, to beta test. Yeah. So we will always call on you, but, you know, but we will also start to, to vary the clients that we use. So. That's awesome. 
Well, thank you, Michael, for being with us today. I really appreciate you being here to help me kick off the first Tea with Brittany Lee. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, if you want to connect with me, I'm on Facebook, um, facebook.com forward slash virtual resort manager. I'm Twitter at VRM Brittany, Instagram at VRM Brittany. Make it easy, right? Um, and I also want you guys to check out the blog because I am actually going to be updating that every week on Fridays. Um, and this webinar replay is actually going to be on our blog tomorrow at 10 a.m. So make sure you check it out. If there's anything you missed or want to hear again from Michael's lips, then uh, just make sure that you go and check that out. And um, I just want to thank everybody so much for coming out and making the first tea with Brittany Lee such a huge success. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for coming. Bye. Bye, Michael. Thank you. Bye. No questions then? Yeah, I don't think there were any questions that anyone had. If you have questions, go ahead and type them in here or you can tweet them to me. But we didn't, I didn't have any tweeted to me during the you post on the blog. Um, any yeah. questions after reading this, uh, I will go ahead and, and uh, respond as well. Yes. Yes, that's a very good point. You can actually comment um, with your Facebook page right on the blog. Um, we have Facebook comments right on there. So you just go in there, type your question, no problem, and we'll have somebody um, knowledgeable, mainly Michael, because <laughs> he's the knowledgeable one, and he'll answer those questions for everybody. Thanks so much for being here right. today, guys. Well, thanks, Brittany. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye.